All right, good morning. It's a brand new week, and uh, who knows what's going to happen, right? I mean, it's just uh, crazy after crazy after crazy that seems to be uh, taking place and, and going on, so uh, we'll see. One thing I know for sure is that the God of all creation uh, neither sleeps nor slumbers, and uh, he works for us while we wait on him. That's true of us as Christ followers, and so um, no doubt. Um, everything is as it should be. And so, however crazy that everything gets, uh, we'll see. Uh, our trust isn't in, in man and who comes and who goes as far as authority uh, in our government. Our trust is in Christ. So uh, don't let this be a distraction to you. Uh, don't, let your, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be fearful. We're just trusting in the Lord and uh, confident that he will do exactly what he says he will do and so we're going to be all right okay so uh, it's a new week uh, this is my uh, first week uh, kind of in a new role at, at work um, I'm dropping down to um, kind of a, a lesser status from an hourly perspective but uh, really more uh, managing director flow of the company that kind of thing so very excited about that opening up lots of opportunity for uh, for ministry uh, and this is what uh, Tammy and I've been kind of gearing toward so we're reducing our uh, our hours, uh, focus more on ministry. We have lots of things that are that are coming on and coming forth, and so uh, we just need to lighten our load, so to speak. So that's where we are. That's what we're doing, and I uh, hope things are well in your world. And I'll share more about that uh, in the coming weeks. I want you to you who I consider my friends to to kind of know what's going on and what to anticipate and what's going on. So uh, I'll be sharing that more more with you uh, later. Um, so let's now let's just jump into the text and and kind of see what we can see. We're in Colossians chapter two and uh, finishing up chapter two actually, and beginning to get into uh, really one of the most practical section sections in, in all of Scripture. Uh, not that they are not all, but this is just really uh, powerful in the way that it that it lays out. So um, let, let's just kind of review real quickly. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that because of where we're where we're going. Um, but in Christ, when you came to Christ, you got everything you needed in order to live life and godliness. We have all things in Christ. Peter told us that. Paul now reiterates that. We have all things necessary for life and godliness in Christ. I don't need anything else. I got the total package. There's no uh, Jesus 2.0. There's no new and improved. There's no... Um, free version and then a pro version. There's none of that. In Christ, you and me have everything we need. I'm complete. Uh, I'm completely new, right? When I came to Christ, all things passed away. Behold, all things became new. This is this is the scriptures. This is what it teaches. Paul taught that a little earlier in, uh, in chapter two here. So that in Christ, I'm complete. I've got everything I need. I'm, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. That's how Paul phrased it to the Ephesians. I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I've been adopted. I've been accepted. I've been lavished with grace. I've been forgiven. Uh, I've, I've had the Holy Spirit as a, a deposited in my life as a guarantee of the inheritance that is to come. These are all true of you and me. No, uh, no extra pieces needed in order to have those blessings. That's who we are. We're complete in him. Uh, the second thing is we're completely forgiven, right? Ever. For, from my past forward, completely forgiven. Um, we, we, we don't really have to say, Father, forgive me. Not that we shouldn't, but we don't have to say that. He already has forgiven us. What we do is confess. Confess means to agree with. I'm completely forgiven. I don't need to ask the Lord for forgiveness. He did that when I first repented of my sins and believed in his name, uh, my sins were forgiven. Not just those in my past, not just those today, but those all the way until uh, I see him face to face. And so I'm completely forgiven. I confess my sins to him. God, I confess to you that today that anger or that gossip or that lust or that whatever uh, was against your holy standard confess that to you. That's what we as Christ followers do. Now, and there's nothing wrong. I, I say it myself, Father, forgive me, but but truly he already has. So it's important that we know that. The third thing is that I have complete victory in Christ. I will never be defeated. 
I may be down, but I'm either up or I'm getting up, right? I mean, that's when, when Peter was down, what did Christ say? When you have returned, strengthen the brothers. What, what, what does he mean by that? Well, hey, I realize you stumbled here. You're going to betray me. But that, that won't last because you're victorious in Christ. Just get up. Do what you did at first. This is, this is how the Scriptures always speak to us. And so those are true of us. Now, Paul then wanted to address what was going on in, in, in uh, the Colossians was this uh, onslaught of false teachings, spiritually based false teachings. And so we looked at, a, at two of them uh, Friday. I'm going to really briefly kind of just remind us of those things and we jump into the third one. But um, this is all performance-based Christianity, which is nothing that you and I are a part of. If you're on Facebook, social media, obviously you're on Facebook because you're watching here from that probably. Um, if, if you're on, on social media, you know that occasionally you'll get one of these little <coughs> advertisements saying um, you know, something about weight loss, and you're doing it wrong. You, know, you, you, you can eat all the bread you want. You can eat all the fat you want, you, or you can't do that, or you can do this. And, and they've all got their special deal, and they're trying to make you feel like you're doing it wrong. It's 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 so that there's a motive. They can sell their product, their way. I'm not saying that there may not be some sincerity in some of that, but for the most part, it's just what uh, my old, old pastor you call belly wash, right? It's just let's just eat healthy, right? But um, and I'm not diminishing that. I'm just saying that that's that's performance based. They want to sell you something, and so they want to make you feel like you need more. You're not doing it right. Same thing in the area of, uh, of health, right? Well, you're not doing it right. Uh, you should eat this way or you should take these pills or you should uh, you know, do this and do that. Same thing in the sales arena. Oh, you're doing it wrong. The reason why you have no sales is because you're doing it wrong. You're not charging enough. You're charging too much. Your uh, you're, you're copyright's wrong. Your uh, you know, social media ads aren't tweaked in. You're doing it wrong. This is, this is what the world screams at us. And ironically, it's the same thing that happens in the church a lot of times. Well, you're doing it wrong. And I want you to understand something. If you have Christ, you're, it's not about what we do on the outside. It's not about doing anything. It's about becoming something. Let's remind ourselves of what he said. Christ plus rules, right? Verse 16, therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. In reality, however, is found in Christ. Now, what is he saying there? It's, it's not Christ plus rules. That's what they were saying. You're not doing it right. You got to add some rules to it, right? You, you got to quit eating this and quit drinking that and start doing this and start doing that. You got to celebrate this festival because uh, if you're not doing those things, you're just not with it. You know, when I was growing up in church, uh, you were known, the, the really spiritual people, were those who came to Wednesday night prayer, right? I mean, you can come to, you, you could have gone to Sunday school, you could have gone to church on Sunday morning, and you're okay. But if you want to really do it right, you got to start coming on Sunday night. So you do that. And then it's like, well, look, I mean, you got that. But if you're not coming on Wednesday night prayer meeting, you don't really love Jesus. And so you would have to come on prayer meeting. And it, it would be like there were always these sets of rules, right? And that was what was going on in this in this culture. We, we got to celebrate Passover. We got to celebrate this and that and all those other things. And that's why Paul says, that's a shadow. That's only a shadow of things to come. Why would I celebrate Passover if the true lamb is with me? Why, why am I celebrating an act that was a type when I have the real sacrificial lamb with me. This is this is what he's saying, and this is this is where he's going. So it's it's not Christ plus rules. I don't need a rule. I don't need that. That is all man-made things. And the second thing we looked at, and it's not, it's not Christ plus denial, right? Twenty verse twenty through twenty-three. <clears throat> Do not let anyone delight in false humility. Uh, I'm sorry, Christ plus experience. Do not let anyone delight in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great t detail about what they have seen. They're puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows and, as God causes it to grow. Now, so you're going to have some that are going, you're not doing it right. you got to follow rules. you got to do this, that, and the other. For these people, it was you got to be circumcised. you got to be. Um, you got to eat the right meats. You can't, you can't eat meat sacrificed to idols. 
else. You can't drink wine. You can't do, can't do, can't do. You got to do, right? You got to celebrate these things. Can't do that. You're not doing it right. That's wrong. The second thing is, is experience. Well, you see, you're still not doing it right. You, you haven't had an experience. Have you, uh, have you ever had some kind of out-of-body experience yet? Well, then you're not doing it right. Have you, have you had, had God visited you in a dream or a vision? Well, you're not really doing it right. See, and this is, this, is, this is the pressure, isn't it, that you feel in different brands of Christianity? This is what you feel. You feel like, well, i, I got to keep more rules. I gotta, no, i got to start doing this. i got to start doing that. No, 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 i got to have an experience. How can I do that? Well, I need to take a class on how to, how to speak in tongues or how to do whatever. And it's just all this gobbledygook, which Paul is going, stop it. Just stop what you're doing, right? Um, and and so, so none of those make us spiritual. Can we, can we just have that conversation? Keeping rules will not make you spiritual because keeping rules is still external practices, right? No, no matter what you do, it's not going to make you spiritual. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, watch what we, what we do and say and all of those things, right? But, but they don't make you spiritual. They, they, don't, they don't do that. Spirituality has to do with the relationship with Christ and Christ in me. Not not rules won't won't make me spiritual. My experience won't make me spiritual. Yet people are selling tons of of items because they've had experiences. You know, they they died, went to heaven, they came back, and and now they're they're special than you. And you're trying to figure out, well, why didn't? How come I haven't had an experience like that? Why haven't I done this? Why is there something wrong with me? That's the that's the goal behind the false teachers is to make you think you're insufficient and that you need what they have. They're no different than the than the snake oil salesman. And this is what he's saying here. Um, so none of it deals with the inner man, right? You can you can not do any of those things and still be full of the lust of the flesh, right? This is this is what he says. Um, they have lost all connection with the head from the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments. Now, we jump into a new one today, and it's this. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, what have I done? I've died to Christ. My flesh, the world, and the devil no longer have a say in my life. Now, I can choose to let them, but they no longer have power and authority over me. I am, I am dead to the flesh, right? It's been crucified. Nevertheless, not I live, but Christ who lives in me. The, the devil no longer has a foothold on me. He no longer has, the world is not my home. All three of those things, that's what he's talking about. Since you died to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? This is, this is snake oil selling. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, right? This is, this is where they're going. This is Christ plus denial. So this is what the world's good. This is what the church is going to add to you. Christ plus rules, Christ plus experience, Christ plus denial. Well, you're doing it wrong. You've got to deny yourself. You got to quit eating. You need to start being a vegan. Uh, you know, you need to you need to quit eating eating meat. Uh, you need to you need to abstain from all wine. You need to you, you need to stay away from the wrong people. You've just got to check out from the world. Go be a monk somewhere. Go live in the woods and 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 be a hermit. This is this is the way. Yeah, the majority of the world religions, this is how they do it. This is exactly what they do. You look at Hinduism, it's what they do. Uh, you, you look at, uh, at, at Gandhi and you, you follow his life. Listen, he, he was one of the most self-disciplined men on the planet. But if Christ wasn't Lord of his life, if Christ wasn't indwelling in him, all that effort got him nothing. This is, and this is, this is what the scriptures remind us, and this is what Paul's saying. Since you died to those things, why, though you belong to the world, do you still submit to its rules? Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings, right? That's why Jesus looked at him and said, it's not what goes into a man that defiles him. What's he saying? Don't handle, don't touch, don't taste. It's not what goes into a man that defiles him. It's what comes out. See, we want to focus on externals. Oh man, that guy's really spiritual. Look at look at how he, he fasts all the time. Look, isn't that what they were they were doing? I fast twice a day. I, I go to the temple. I give my tithe. Right. I do all. Watch me do all these things. Just go through the Sermon on the Mount. And you're going to see Jesus attacking this very thing right here because it's all bunk. It's you you don't lack anything. There's nothing for you to do. In that sense, the only thing you do is follow him so that you might become 
like him. That's the point. All this external stuff doesn't fix anything. So we, if we retreat from the world, we don't do TV, we give up on everything, it's not going to make me more spiritual. Why? Because it's the battle is within me, right? Not, not out there. The battle is within me. I have to uh, deny myself, take up my cross, follow him. That's an internal thing, not an external thing. See, we can play all the rules and feel better about ourselves, if Christ isn't seated on the throne of my heart and I'm not putting off the old man, then I'll never follow him because that's what he did. He laid aside everything and then and then began to humbly serve, care for, right? He invited us into that ministry, into that world. And so this is what we do. Uh, no one who has this hope, everyone who has this hope purifies themselves just as he is pure. It's like He's our model. I'm going to purify myself. But it's not from the outside. It's from the inside. Right? This is, this is what he's talking about. Rules, vision, self-denial. They, they all work on focusing on the flesh. It feels spiritual, but it has nothing to do with your spiritual life. It's all spiritual pride. That's, that's what that is. Um, it, it makes you feel superior to other people. Right? Like, like uh, you know, I thank the Lord that I'm not like this sinner. Right? That's the concept. You may not say that out loud, but that's the inference. So stop with your seeking deeper experiences in some mystical realm. Stop with the rule keeping, you know, in order to, to attain holiness. Stop with the self-denial. Just know that in Christ you are complete. This is Now listen to what he says. Verse 22. These rules have nothing to do with... Uh, have, have to do with the things that are all destined to, to perish with use based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body. But they lack any value in doing what? Restain, restraining sensual indulgences. That's the issue. That's why, okay, well, I'm just never going to be around a woman. Okay, well, but it's... It's not just the act of sexual immorality. It is the thought that is defiling as well. And so that rule can't fix that thought, right? Okay, well, I'm not going to kill anybody. Okay, well, that that's a good thing, but you still hate in your heart and, and not killing anybody doesn't fix the heart. It's a heart issue. So when Christ has come to take up residence in your life, you are complete in all you need. What do you need to, 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 to uh, live a, a holy spiritual life? The indwelling Christ, seated on the throne of your life, and you meditating on his truth, imitating him in all that he did. That's the way to holiness. And so don't let anybody tell you it's about all this other trappings. I, I know that's a mouthful to, to hear today, but it's just powerful that we need to hear this. All right, man, I love you guys. I kept you way too long today. Uh, I love you. I can't wait to share some more truth with you tomorrow as we jump into chapter three. Lord bless you.